It's one of York's most anonymous buildings, but it's what's inside that counts. Housed here is the railway's engineering memory, an archive of around 9 million records dating back to the 17th century, but still expanding to take in documents from the 13,000 or so live projects currently being pushed forward by Network Rail. Give us a brief flavour of what you have in this vast building. This is just one of the stores that we have here at the National Records Centre and as you can see it's, uh, it's, pre it's pretty full. Um, each drawing is catalogued, we have finding aids for all, of these, uh, for all of these drawings. So when the request comes in we are able to put our hands to the information quickly. We hold um, the, the collection of infrastructure records for the whole of the um, operational railway. Um, we hold the civil engineering collections, we hold the signalling collections and we also have the registry of deeds which has um, documents relating to the title of all the property and land that the railway has owned past and present. How significant a collection is it in historical terms? It's not a complete collection in the sense that we have everything that the railway has ever produced in relation to these structures. Um, we have a fairly major set of records here, but railway records are found in other places as well. So the National Archives, for example, they have a very large railway collection. There are also things that just don't survive. Um, I believe that in the, in the Second World War, there was um, a fairly major bombing raid in the King's Cross area, and the drawing office for the LNER was, was bombed, and, uh, and a lot of records records were destroyed, which means that for the East Coast Main Line, the major stations in particular, we have very little historical information relating to them. So what we have here is a collection of unusual records, things you might not necessarily associate with the railway. This is a title deed and the oldest record in your archive? Yes, it's one of the oldest that we have, um, 1584, and this um, document relates to land in Stratford-upon-Bow in London, um, and this has been um, referred to relatively recently in, as, part of, uh, as part of transactions that are going on in that part of the world. Still looking at land, this is referred to as the family bible. It is, yeah. So this was um, compiled by one of the original surveyors for the Stockton Darlington Railway and it has um, a record of all the transactions um, and the people that they bought the land off. So we have the amounts here, you have a little plan here of the, um, of the, of the land that's been purchased and the people who they purchased it from. Indebted to the Bishop of Durham. Indeed. If you look through this book there are a lot of transactions between the railway company and the Bishop of Durham. The railway actually owns a number of war memorials and this drawing depicts very beautifully the Victory Arch at Waterloo. Yeah, after the First World War, the railway companies put a lot of effort into commemorating their fallen colleagues and the Victory Arch at Waterloo is still one of the major entrances and exits to that particular station and it's a permanent memorial to the railwaymen who died. Moving forward, um, New Euston, not widely regarded as an architectural gem, but it, we have a different style of drawing here. Yeah, so this is a very modern drawing um, for a modern railway. This is 1964 and what it's aiming to do is give you, give you the impression of kind of light and space um, in a very modern and dynamic way for, for British railways. Immediacy is everything in our digital world. That means converting hard copies into ones and noughts so engineers can interrogate the archive's database and download the records they need when they need them. Ongoing is a scanning program. Two and a half million documents have been digitised since work got underway in 1994, back in rail track days, representing about 30% of the collection. There's been a scan on demand service since 2008. There is a very obvious contrast between the precise clinical engineering drawings of today generated by computer and documents like these which effectively fulfil the same role but do so rather more majestically. Some of the structures here help to sharpen the cutting edge. Robert Stevenson's tubular girder bridge across the Menai Strait for example. Others they achieve notoriety. This is a collection of photographs showing Thomas Boucher's Tay Bridge shortly after its fatal collapse. All the great engineers are represented. Uh, William Henry Barlow, Joseph Locke, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. You'd be delighted to hear that he signed off the skirting boards in Paddington Station. But it would be wrong to think that this is simply a historical repository. The National Records Centre plays an important role 
in the railway's day-to-day -day asset management regime. Understanding how a structure was built and its subsequent evolution can help to explain the development of a defect and inform the design work to effectively remediate it. The documents here tell a story, sometimes revealing features hidden to the eye. Age does not prevent them offering useful insight. Yeah, certainly um, the drawings that we have in our collection will potentially show um, foundation works, um, which are obviously are required if you need to make a change to that particular structure. The engineers will be coming to us to uh, obtain the most up-to-date information around the configuration of the assets. So we will be supplying to them as-built records, health and safety files from previous projects. And the, the engineer will require all of that information for them to then embark on making changes to the railway assets. Uh, and effectively that kickstarts their project. I think we can envisage the challenge of physical documents being stored in rooms, but ongoing is the, the difficulty of managing huge quantities of, of digital data. How are you dealing with that? Well, certainly you need to have robust content management systems to manage that information. Um, we need to collaborate with our project teams, so you have to have systems that are accessible to the project teams to enable them to undertake their work. The format is also an area we're having a look at at the moment in terms of how you preserve digital content in the future and certainly that is one of the challenges that we need to address. The pace of technological change really makes what you do very fluid I imagine. Yes, yeah, certainly you need to be at the top of your game in terms of making sure we're protecting the records that we need to hold within the company. Good records management today helps to build an archive that's fit for tomorrow's railway. It's not frontline engineering and as such it's easy to overlook but Network Rail's National Record Centre does play a part in what goes on at the track face. It's recognised for the care it bestows on the unique collections held here, and rightly so. You can't put a price on 200 years of deep, accumulated knowledge.